Hey, y'all. How you doing? First, a little about me and then a little about you. So I used to be a fat, pre-diabetic, miserable family physician. And part of that was my fault, but part of it wasn't my fault because I had been mistaught. Definitely in med school and residency, but previously by my beloved Granny Barry, who taught me what food was. And I think many of us share that same story. We, we were mistaught. We were misled. We've forgotten who and what we are as a species. And I think once you come back and revisit that and, and make peace with what you are and who you are, the principles of a proper human diet become self-evident almost. Now, about you. Raise your hand if you identify as... <clears throat> Homo sapiens sapien. Who identifies as HSS? Okay, good. So we know from the veterinary literature that there is a proper canine diet for dogs. It's, it's known. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Purina has some input on that. But basically, if you want a very healthy dog, you feed them a specific diet. Same for cats, same for cows, same for sheep. Could that also apply to Homo sapiens sapiens? Probably, right? Let's talk about that. So why do we need to even talk about this? Because we are seemingly the only species on the planet who's forgotten how to feed ourselves. We don't know what to eat. There's this huge debate. You never, when, when Nisha and I are hunting deer in the woods, we never see a small group of deer having a slap fight over whether they should eat the clover or the fescue or the weeds. It's like they just know. Intuitively, they just know, instinctually. This is why we have to talk about this because our ignorance and forgetfulness about what a proper human diet is has led to epidemics of all these conditions and many more. A proper human diet is not a fad. When I'm out in the, in the pasture with the sheep, they never get really riled up about, you know what, we're, we're, we're going to be clover-based. We're not going to eat grass anymore. <laughs> By God, we're not eating any more weeds. They don't do that. They just eat the nutrition that they need. And I would opine that a proper human diet for human beings is also not a fad. I think it is the proper way you and I should both eat. A proper human diet is not factory made. It is not scalable. It grows, it creeps, it crawls, it runs, it jumps, it slithers, it flies. That's a proper human diet. If there's any extra steps added, it's probably not PhD. A proper human diet by definition is low in carbohydrates. And I have, I have quite a range of carbohydrates. I think that it's possible to eat a proper human diet as a vegetarian, if you're including plenty of fish, plenty of eggs, plenty of animal, other animal proteins that, that are okay with you ethically. I think it's possible. I think it's difficult, but I think it's possible. Some of us, like this previously morbidly obese family physician, uh, so I'll tell you a funny story. So used to, this button was the button that was in danger of popping. Okay, and so I would go into an exam room with a patient who was overweight, pre-diabetic, whatever, and I'd be like, look, Jerry, and women, women know this, this break in eye contact. Men don't get it as often. And I would say, Jerry, you're gonna have to move more and eat less, okay? You gotta lose some weight. And Jerry's eyes, he would break eye contact and look at this button for just a tenth of a second. <laughs> Unconsciously, couldn't help it. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Now, if any button's in danger, it's often this button on a proper human diet. And I think that's the way it should be for all of us. But some people can tolerate more carbohydrates than others. And that's why I think about the carbohydrate intake as a knob, just like the knob on your stereo. Do your, your stereo still have knobs? Probably not. Right? I need to have a slide or something. But if... 
you're doing PhD and you're, you're not getting your goals, you need to turn down the carbon tape. That's probably the answer for the vast majority of questions. A proper human diet is uninflammatory. And many people, when you start talking about keto, carnivore, how your inflammation gets better, they literally think you're full of shit. A diet can't do that. You have to have pills for that. But absolutely, our diet is filled with inflammatory things. Now, some of these things are more inflammatory for some people than for others, right? There are some of you in this audience who can tolerate some oxalates and some lectins and some phytates, right? And there are others of you that if you even think about them, you become inflamed. But if you're eating the standard American diet that's by definition high carb and inflammatory, you feel so miserable that you can't get any feedback from your body at all, right? It's like an alcoholic who's drinking three-fifths of whiskey a day and you give him a shot of beer and you're like, did you feel that? No, I didn't feel that. No, but if that guy's been dry for a year and you give him a glass of beer, he's going to feel that. That's what happens when you remove the inflammatory, processed, high-carb junk food from your diet is you actually get to start to hear that ancestral, ancient voice saying, yeah, I feel really good when I eat that way, but if I eat this shit, not so much. That's important. You should listen to that. A proper human diet is ancestral. Now, we, we sometimes when we're trying to create things, we have to pick arbitrary boundaries. And so if humans had access to it and they ate it more than 15,000 years ago, that's ancestral. So full disclosure, I drink coffee. That's 100% not ancestrally appropriate. Okay, I, I love butter and heavy cream, not ancestrally appropriate, according to my own definition. So disclosure. But if you're still having problems on low carb or keto, ketovore or carnivore, you need to apply this law, this principle, because this is the one that's probably going to help you get over. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody on keto carnivore come to me and like, my inflammation is still crazy. I'm, I'm not reaching my goals. And, I, and I'm like, do you like cheese? And they're like, oh, hell yeah. Cheese. <laughs> Let's talk about that. And so the, the bananas, the, the modern banana is a clone. You know, you understand every single banana in every supermarket, everywhere in the world today is the exact same banana. They are, they are cloned. There's no, there's no nothing. We took charge of the banana hundreds of years ago and we came up with the Cavendish and said, yep, that's it. And so every banana plant around the world that's used commercially is a clone of that original plant. We've done this hundreds if not thousands of times with all the fruit, all the berries. No ancestral berry or fruit from 15,000 years ago in any way resembles the fruit and veg in the supermarket today. There's even uh, zoological evidence that animals, not humans, animals, selectively breed fruits to be larger and sweeter. Yeah, true story. So when I first started this, I had very little nutrition training in, in medical school, had zero anthropological training. Paleoanthropology, I didn't even know what that was. Archaeology, eh, sort of, maybe Graham Hancock, I've heard of him. But in order to come up with these principles, I've had to dig into all of those silos that are not my home base. I had to dig all of that out and bring all of it together to come up with these principles. And the average doctor doesn't think they even need any nutrition training. But if you start asking them, how many books or papers have you read about anthropology, paleoanthropology, crickets start chirping because they, they don't like, why the hell would I even, why well, don't even get it? How can you know what the proper diet for human beings is in modern times if you don't know what we ate 15, 30, 100,000 years ago? Because that's probably important, right? Cows have been eating grass for millions of years. And so if Purina or some mega corporation comes out and says, oh no, we've got the perfect cow, food for cows, 
it's only $129 for a 50 pound bag, you're going to be like, no, I, I, it's pretty obvious. Grass is the proper bovine diet. We don't need that product. A proper human diet is very nutrient dense. Okay? Anytime you're eating something just for pleasure, that's, that's probably not PhD. Now, you can definitely eat a ribeye for pleasure. Definitely. But it's also one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Okay? And I apologize to our, most of the vendors out here, but we don't need a factory to make food. If your food came from a factory, that's a problem. Okay, I had a, one of the vendors introduce himself and he was bragging about his, his little product out there. Had 14 scientists and two nutritionists working on this product for three years. And I was like, yeah, that's some bullshit then. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> definitely not gonna drink that. Yeah, okay, excellent, thank you. Um, thanks for the heads up. I don't think he meant it as a warning. But that's how it came off. A proper human diet is very satiating. Now, do, do you think that Kellogg's and General Mills and Kraft Heinz and Mondelez, do you think those big guys, do they want to make satiating food? Think about that. What, what would that do to their profit model if they made food that was very filling and satiating and kept you full for hours. A proper human diet satiates you, moves all of your hunger and satiety hormones to the sweet spot so that when you've eaten enough, you get an ancestral signal to stop eating. You're done. You've had enough. And then you don't get hungry again for a long damn time. That's important. I think that matters. A proper human diet optimizes your health. So how many of you guys saw the movie, The Game Changer? Remember that movie? They were bragging about the diet that the gladiators ate in Rome. They ate beans and rice, legumes. That's what they, they, the, the, they were the rock stars of Rome. Who knows what the gladiators in Rome, what was their societal status? Slaves and prisoners, prisoners of war. Yep. That's what, digging into archaeology a little bit, history a little bit, these other um, areas of study, that's what, how you benefit from that. Because if you didn't know better, because you saw, you know, Russell Crowe, he was hot as hell. <laughs> you're like, well, okay, gladiators. He was a star. They have their stars. I should eat beans and rice. You see how that works? But if you've got just a little deeper layer of understanding of how the world works and how it has worked for a long time, you'd be like, yeah, they were slaves. I don't really want to eat a slave diet, a prisoner diet. But invariably, the slave diet was always grains, sugar, tubers, legumes, beans and rice. We got tired of that, it was rice and beans. Because it keeps, it keeps the slaves alive, keeps them healthy enough to work a little, <clears throat> keeps their belly full so they're not complaining or re rebelling. But does it do anything for their, are you worried if you own slaves about optimizing their health? Not really, really, right? So an, a proper human diet optimizes your health. It's not just belly filler, it doesn't just taste great. It also nourishes your health. And a proper human diet improves your health markers. And I should add, a lot, okay? So look at this little pie graph. I recently used this in one of my YouTube videos. Can you guys read those? Can you see those? Okay, so if I'm correct that there is a proper human diet, and if I'm correct that this is the proper human diet, then when you apply this diet, when you stop the standard American crap, or the vegan diet, or any other number of diets, the, the high grain, high carb Mediterranean diet, and you start to eat this diet, then you should notice things like your A1C starts to go back to normal. Your fasting insulin, triglycerides, HDLC, inflammatory markers, all that should start to return to normal. If I'm right, right? 
So this pie graph is the, the hazard ratios. If you have this condition, this is how, how big of a risk it is for you to have a heart attack. And this pie graph applies to all other chronic diseases as well. So if you have a diet that lowers somebody's LDL, okay, is that a big deal according to this from published research? Do you see LDL on there? Right, right. So LDL actually comes in number 13 or 14 in this list that I made this pie graph for them. Wouldn't you want to fix the biggest wedge of pie? I'm just a redneck. We like to do things that matter. You want to spend the most of your effort working on the stuff that's going to get you the most benefit. Is everybody okay with that concept? It's, I know it's simple-minded. So when you apply the principles of a proper human diet, type 2 diabetes goes virtually away in literally every person. It always improves and in most cases goes completely away. <clears throat> now, a vegan diet can lower your A1C and they'll tout that from the heavens, but it's usually two-tenths of a percentage point, right? And then they, get, they, they publish 50 papers based on that. But what about a diet that just got rid of type 2 diabetes? It's almost as if type 2 diabetes is carbohydrate toxicity syndrome. And when you cut out the inflammatory slow poison carbohydrates, type 2 diabetes goes away. That almost makes it sound like a, a poisoning event, not a disease that we don't understand. It's probably genetic. Same for metabolic syndrome, hypertension, obesity, all those things. When you eat a proper human diet, they improve markedly, if not go back completely to normal. So all these things get better if I'm right about what a proper human diet is. A proper human diet includes some degree of fasting, okay? It's clear in the anthropological literature studying religions and studying uh, groups all over the world, there was always some fasting in their daily life. It was often known as starving because the hunters didn't do great that day. But your body actually, through the, the eons, learned to use that as a downtime, almost like when a factory, you don't work on those huge presses when they're running, you, you wait for downtime, you shut them down, and then you can replace parts and do maintenance. Our body kind of figured that out millions of years ago. And some, I, so I highly advise anybody, if you're just new to all this, don't start fasting first. I think that's a good way to, to fail and give up. Implement the other strategies of a proper human diet first. Fasting will just come because it's natural. We're all built to do it. A proper human diet is a species-specific, person-specific diet that works with your body's physiology and biochemistry to provide the best possible physical and mental health. That's my hypothesis. And we'll see in the coming years if that hypothesis proves true or not. It does not scale up. Again, I'm sorry for most of the vendors out here, but you cannot make a billion dollars a year as a, as a proper human diet food manufacturer. One of the things I love about a proper human diet when people are eating real meat and real eggs and real veg, if that's part of your PhD, is that you start to seek out local ranchers. You want to know the guy that raised your cow or your sheep. You start to seek out local produce. You want to know who raised that and, and, and maybe even look deeper in how they raised it. So see, there's this unwritten law in the South that the closer you are to being able to put your hands on somebody, the better they're likely to behave. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so if you're buying food and, and the headquarters is in New York and the distribution centers in San Diego and the corporate office is wherever, you can't really get your hands on anybody. What are you going to do if they slow poison you for 20 years and you wind up with fatty liver? Not much, but if you're getting your food from local sources, you know the guy. You can go and have a chat with him, as we say in the South, <laughs> if he's putting something in your food that he shouldn't be putting in your food. It's not patentable. Nobody's gonna make a, a million, billion dollars 
on a proper human diet. How many members of our tribe do we have here? Stand up if you're part of the tribe. Stand up. Let me see you. Hey. Thank you guys so much for supporting what Nisha and I do. Thank you guys so much. We're, all, we're going to meet up with all the tribe members on the bridge at one, if you didn't get the message. So that's just a short little taste of what I think a proper human diet is. I've got a, a few videos on my small YouTube channel that you can check out. And I'm happy to take any questions you might have from me. Uh, this is directly aimed at the, the shy person here who's like, I want to say hi, but I'm afraid. Stop that. <laughs> I'm here for a reason. Okay, I could have flown in, gave this talk, and flew out. I've been here all week, all, all weekend, and I'm going to be here till this evening, so stop it. Grow up and stand up and come say hi. Thank you.